so I've just called this session writing up rather than how to write up because I think we're going to look at it in, uh, through a couple of different um, lenses if you like. Uh, obviously it's a big theme for everyone, it was a huge theme for me when I was doing my diploma. Um, hopefully by the end of this session you'll have some fresh perspectives um, and thoughts that might help you to get unstuck or think about your write-up in a different way. Um, some of the stuff I'll talk about might sound very familiar and might really strike a chord with you, some of it might not be like your experience at all. I know um, I got quite bogged down with the write-up in my diploma, whereas uh, for, for example Carla was originally she was one of my, my apprentices and she just absolutely aced it, she just kind of bombed through it, or she seemed to from my perspective. Um, so everyone has a slightly different perspective on it. Um, but this was this picture of Charles Dickens kind of um, really reminds me of my experience, which was, you know, kind of studiously trying to ignore that there was a write-up that had to happen <laughs> while sitting there feeling, um, yeah, like kind of in this dark pit of despair about my write-up. Um, hopefully it isn't that bad for everyone else, but anyway. So here's the kind of stuff that worked for me that helped me get from that, that place. Um, so, um, confronting and working through some, I was, I held some, some kind of negative stories about the, di the diploma and about write-ups and I had some, and probably still do have some limiting self-beliefs, uh, and some flat out just excuses that I was making. Um, some of these may sound familiar, so you might have your own set of them, which you might have a whole load of new ones, which, um, you can bring to this, but these are mine. Um, so. This is me halfway through the diploma, or maybe four or five years into the diploma. Um, and I was telling myself things like, I hate writing. Um, I find it really boring, really laborious. Um, it's, you know, just, <sighs> I hate it. I hate the process. Um, my dyslexia makes it exhausting. This is another thing I was telling myself. I mean, I'm only borderline dyslexic anyway. It's not like, a, it's not like a massive, massive problem. It's, you know, it's, there but it's um i was enabling that to become more of a problem than it needed to be and i was kind of using it as an excuse um i was this is another one i was telling myself um oh yeah i'm, I'm really kind of you know i just design intuitively now you know kind of i just do it on the hoof and the fly you know i can just apply the principles and the patterns and uh, the and the the ethics as i go along and and when i sit down to write it up that just slows me down and it means i, I can't do as much design work i can't make as much difference in the world you know it's i'm far more effective if i'm just doing the design and making things happen um or another classic one that i came across often was um you know trying to trying to get this this design that i've done is kind of messy and a bit kind of iterative and a bit all over the place trying to sort of write that down into like a linear report or something it's just kind of it's not it doesn't feel authentic and i feel like i'm i'm, I'm lying you know it's, it's all just bullshit that I'm trying to write here. This is nonsense. And I'm a fake, you know, <laughs> had some really kind of quite um, negative stuff I was telling myself about my, my write-up and where I was. I also kind of felt like I don't know what good looks like. I don't know what, I didn't have a sense of what am I actually trying to achieve? What would a good design look like? What is enough? What's too much? You know, I was kind of flailing around not knowing what I was actually aiming for. Um, and then this is another one that, that um, I've heard myself say time and time again, which is the whole thing is just a box ticking exercise anyway. You know, what's the point of doing this diploma? You know, I can, I can design. I know I can design. Um, why spend all this time wasting all this time sitting down writing stuff up? Um, and so, so some of these um, I had to kind of confront them. And so things like the I hate writing. Well, I can find I can think of it as being a chore. I can think of it as just being awesome. I've got to do, or I can think of it as something I can look quite enjoyable. Um, my dyslexia makes it exhausting. Well, yes, it can do, but um, actually, what some of the strengths that come from being dyslexic are that um, I'm actually quite a visual person. I like working really graphically, so why not kind of use that as turn that to my um, advantage? Um, design is second nature to me now, and writing up just slows me down. This I found for me, this was a bit of a spurious one and that, that was holding me back for ages. Once I actually got into writing up my designs or, or presenting them, perhaps is a better term, um, I actually found that that process of slowing down, revisiting work that I'd done and then going through it really slowly and piecing together how to present it, that really made me reflect on those designs a lot more and that 
I learned so much from revisiting designs and working through them. Or um, when I was just doing design work from the outset and thinking about how to present it, that slowing down, it just really, really helped me to, to develop as a designer. This a linear write-up isn't an authentic reflection of the process. It, no, it kind of isn't, and that's that's all right because your design report or your write-up, it isn't the whole process. You know, you, you might have heard this phrase, the map is not the territory, and it's a similar thing. It's a design report of what really happened. It's not everything that really happened. It doesn't need to be. It's just presenting the kind of highlights, if you like, to explain to an audience what happened. Um, and, and so it's okay if it, it might feel a bit like you're kind of editing or you, you, you're glossing over stuff. You don't need to present all of it. Um, so it's not all bullshit and you're not a fake. The, I don't know what good looks like. Basically, that was just me making it an excuse because I hadn't really engaged with the criteria properly. And I hadn't really spent the time to look at how other people had written up their designs to get inspiration. Um, and the, it's just a box ticking exercise anyway. There's some truth in that, you know, partly you are writing to a criteria so that you can tick boxes, but in that process, going back to the kind of um, thing I was saying before about slowing down and reflecting, by doing that box ticking exercise, there are benefits and yields that you can um, get out of that process anyway. So there are all these things, these things were kind of, they were negative in terms of pushing me, they were very positive in terms of allowing me to soothe my own ego about the fact I wasn't writing up my designs. Uh, so they have, these things have some functional value, these, all these thought processes, but they weren't helping me to progress my um, designs. And most of these things, you can flip them on the head by just looking at them from what's the, you know, what's the other way of looking at this, this kind of uh, negative story I've got. So that was a really big thing for me. Um, confronting a lot of these negative um, stories I was telling myself and these excuses. So big things that helped me move on, clarifying my goals. So really looking at the criteria, what I'm actually trying to achieve here. What are the tutors looking for in my report, my write-up? Because at this point, it's not, it's not necessarily about what's the design trying to achieve? How am I saving the world? How am I building amazing communities? How am I becoming like Captain Sustainable? It's about... What's the goal for the write-up? What do the tutors actually need to see? And what does a good report look like? So clarifying those goals. Um, and, but also clarifying my bigger goals, like why am I even doing the diploma in the first place? What, what do I hope to get out of it? Um, and that was important for kind of helping me with the motivation to write that stuff up. Um, related to that was thinking about my design reports um, and thinking about what additional functions I could get out of them. So this isn't, they don't have to be just a report that I write so that my tutor can fill in the criteria and I get the diploma at the end of it. Uh, I was thinking, well, also, if I want to get work as a, like, a paid design consultant, then having a portfolio that looks really good and is accessible, um, that's going to be good for clients so I can showcase my work to them. Um, so it's like a marketing tool. So that's another function. It's another reason to do that write-up and to make it look decent. Um, I can use them as uh, teaching materials when I'm teaching on PDCs um, or, you know, as my portfolio to help me get uh, new apprentices when I'm a tutor. So by thinking about what are all of the benefits I'm going to get from these design write-ups, um, that gave me additional motivation to sit down and, and do them. Um, a really, another really key thing for me was when I finally figured out how to do my first write-up, I kind of which is, I did them all, in the end, I did them all as um, PowerPoints, a bit, a bit like what I'm showing you now. Um, and I really, because I really liked working graphically, and that allowed me to kind of concentrate quite a bit on like doing the layout, and just, um, there was no long, like massive long blocks of text in there. It was just kind of, I could do it piecemeal, dip in and out of it, and just do like one slide at a time, add a bit of text here, image there, diagram there, and a table there, and it was kind of done. Um, and just thinking through my pattern for the whole write-up. Um, once I've done one, I basically use that, reuse that pattern for all 10 designs. And so I didn't have to kind of reinvent the wheel. And it also meant that my portfolio was then more accessible for tutors to mark and for um, subsequent, yeah, for apprentices to look at and orientate themselves if they're looking at multiple designs. Um, all my designs are available on my website. So I'll show you a link to that later on. 
So finding that pattern for the write-up was really important. This was possibly the most important thing for me, which was rather than it being uh, like, oh, this horrible write-up that I've got to do, which is a massive chore, it was thinking about how can I turn this write-up into actually something I want to do that that is that feels more like leisure time or like feels like I'm kind of treating myself. Um, and so it was partly doing it, working graphically and laying things out because I really quite enjoy making things look nice and kind of trying to, yeah, I could sit there for like a quarter of an hour moving um, a bit of text left a bit and then right a bit and then maybe up and down a bit and not worrying about what's the to what's the ultimate outcome and saying oh you know I've got to get this thing finished come on a certain time but just kind of really relaxing into the process and enjoying it and just enjoying the time I spent doing it that's part of the reason why I got really into SketchUp which is like this 3D modeling tool because I just loved playing with it and just kind of creating my designs in 3D and like in immersing myself in this 3D world, this virtual world. It wasn't, it wasn't just about trying to make the design look nice. It was about me having fun and being playful in, in how I was spending my time. Um, and I, I think I'm quite a sort of um, pleasure orientated person. So that was quite important for me. Um, then another thing was working, I had, I didn't have one guild all the way through, but I had, I sort of dropped in and out of a, a few, um, different guilds um, and I found two there were two things in particular one was having like arranging with my guild to say right I'm gonna let's have a let's all get together and have like a, a social one evening we'll go to someone's house we'll have dinner um, and then I will commit to presenting one of my designs that's half written up at that guild me meeting so it wasn't like having to write up five designs for my IPA or whatever. It was just like, I'm going to commit to finishing this off. And that then made me accountable to my guild. You know, I would have to explain to them why I hadn't done it. Uh, I also joined an, another guild a bit later on where two of the other people, there, was, there were three of us, and two of them had committed to submitting their portfolios for their IPA on a certain date. So at that point, I was like, right, I'm not going to be the, I'm not going to be the laggard left behind. I'm going to um, make sure that I'm, I keep up with them. So there's a little bit of competition. And, um, you know, sometimes in permaculture, we, there's this principle of um, cooperation, not competition. But, but I think actually cooperation and competition, I think a little bit of competition can be really healthy. It can really help to motivate you. So um, there was that. So that, that's kind of all the things that work for me. I'm just going to open it out to other tutors now and just ask um, if you've got any top tips or anything you'd like to add to what I've just said. Um, we've got probably about 10 minutes for that. So um, I'll tell you, what, I might just pick on you. Um, so I'm going to start with, I'm going to start with Carla because Carla, you were amazing at writing up. So Carla, have you got anything you want to chuck in? Uh, uh, yeah, I can say something. Do you, um, so one thing I've, I've hunted out, I don't know whether you can see it because I can't see my screen now. Or, my, uh, or whatever. Uh, anyway, anyway, I'll carry on talking and Joe just tell me if this is not visible because um, so I did because I'm sort of an artist, I like playing with paper. So this was something that I did. But it was for my first design. Um, and so, yeah, that was just playing with materials and using it quite simply to just write different things on the at different points in the paper. I think you can see there there's a a double, a double sheet, like a little mini book at the back of there. I would totally say that since doing my diploma though, what Joe did in terms of doing a repeating layout, I find so much easier. So I think I set off with thinking I'll do different things and, and then changed and thought, yeah, this is, it's too much work in a way. <laughs> So, so it was really helpful, but I'm also someone who thinks on paper and writing. So I found the process of writing really helpful as a thought provoking process. Um, so yeah, so that's just a couple of thoughts, but I'm, I'd be interested to hear from other people. So I'll pass it back to you, Joe. Thanks, Carla. Um, Katie, I know you had some specific thoughts about the, the term write up. Yeah. Hi, everyone again. Yeah. So, um, I mean, certainly when I was an apprentice doing my um, portfolio for my diploma, um, all of my all of my designs were 
written documents. Um, I did, a couple of them were very photograph orientated. So they were based around a series of photos. Um, since I've been designing um, post diploma um, and yeah, I just, I love designing now. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just a complete designing geek really for permaculture stuff. I'm really enjoying and embracing really other ways of documenting. So I'm preferring to um, refer to designs as being documented rather than, or shared rather than written up. Um, because I think there's a lot of different ways. I mean, the, the handbook, um, the diploma handbook definitely talks about different ways of presenting or sharing, documenting designs. Um, but I'm really enjoying and, and seeing it as part of my role as a diploma tutor, really, to really kind of experiment and experience some of those different ways. So videoing designs, perhaps doing an audio of designs, perhaps even, you know, recording a podcast episode about a design. Um, going, yeah, a series of photographs, I think for me, yeah, really, really enjoyed that. Um, using a blog even, you know, set, setting up, there's lots of free ways of setting up blogs, very easy to set up blogs, you know, maybe even a series of blog posts as a, as a design way of design documenting. Um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm personally, I'm doing a, an art and design course at the moment, and I'm, I'm going to be doing uh, modules in 3D modeling and things. And I'm looking at that, you know, perhaps, you know, documenting, um, sharing a design through creating a 3D model. Um, and it's the, you know, the list is endless, really, as long as as long as we're meeting um, and, I, and I feel for, you know, my role as a tutor that my design, my design documenting should be meeting the um, assessment criteria, you know, because that's that's we've we've established that that's a really, you know, that's a good and useful standard to be at. Um, then it, it can literally be in any way, really, as long as it's suitable for the person that you're or the organisation that you're doing that design for. So, yeah, that's some of my thoughts. Great. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Katie. Um, and I'm going to come to Barry next. Um, I hope it's all right me just put, uh, putting everyone on the spot. Um, but because Barry, I know you you use video in your portfolio and use use quite a, diff a few different um, media. Um, do you want to say some of your top tips? Yeah, yeah, sure. So first thing I'd like to share is um, I finished in March earlier this year. I was on the on the diploma for seven years um, and I really connect uh, and feel a lot of the experiences that are going on already in people, you know, lots of the stuff that people have shared. I had a complete wow moment and a breakthrough moment when I reconnected what my intentions were and my goal were for my diploma. What was it going to give me, make possible for me and do for me? And when I reconnected with what that goal was, that gave me a sense of kind of purpose. You know, all of a sudden these write-ups had a, a new a new reason reason for coming into, into being. And what blew me away is the, these, this story and narrative I developed around, oh, I can't, I'm not going to, much like Joe and others have experienced, completely flipped. And I went to the point where I can't wait to sit down and do this next video. I can't wait to, to, to put this PowerPoint together. You know, when can I next write up? And I'm not taking a mic. It blew me away. Um, so there was something, something about that, you know, you may be kind of asking my question, what if, um, what if my next write up was the best, most exciting thing I've done into a, a diploma journey so far, you know, what would I have to do? What might, uh, what, what might that look like? What support might I need? You know, really kind of being focused on it. Um, lighting a candle, sticking some music on, chilling out, doing whatever you need, you know, you need to do for yourself. Um, one top tip around video. Um, would be from myself um, would be to I needed a, a, a something next to me I needed like a, a bullet point list to make sure that once I hit send and share that video my tutor wasn't going to come back and say ah yeah you didn't mention this you didn't do this you didn't do that you didn't do that and then I was going to end up in a big mess trying to edit it so have a script next to me um, that that would be it the other last one I would share quickly would be friendly competition so I had a response partner my amazing response partner, Jenny Brooke, Brooks, we still meet up once a month. Um, and she, uh, through the encouragement of Wilf, my tutor, threw the gauntlet down to me and said, let's accredit the next, um, the next diploma gathering. And I said, yeah, let's. So every month we would check in and we would commit to each other and hold each other accountable. And that was really, really fun. 
So yeah, have some fun, make it fun. What if your diploma write-ups were fun? How cool would that be? Yeah, I totally, totally challenged my experience. I think I know Hannah Thorogood calls it the ping when apprentices suddenly go from this kind of being stuck in a bit like, oh, this is hard work and it's so much effort to suddenly like ping. Oh, this is like loads of fun and I'm really like kind of excited and motivated. Um, and yeah, for me, I had that same that same experience of, of yeah, it's like that kind of problem is the solution thing, isn't it? It's like turning all that negativity into actually what are the positives here and how can I make this something I'm really enjoying and really proud of. So anyway, um, moving on to your tutor then. So Wilf, have you got any top tips for writing up that you support your apprentices with? Thanks, Joe. Um, I'm, I'm loving the uh, reference to the um, cooperation and competition. Uh, the, the new principle, which uh, we, we talked about actually a little bit uh, jokingly back at the diploma gathering back in March. So uh, yeah, thumbs up on that one. Um, yeah, so I, I finished my diploma back in about 2003, I think. So my approach back then is probably not particularly relevant now, but I uh i had a lot of kind of professional landscape related work and a lot of professional community development work so i kind of had to create reports for the client anyway um so it was very simply kind of just doing that for them but then could then submit it as part of the diploma so there was a, there was a high level of motivation there anyway nowadays um it's really quite different so i'm still looking for where that motivation is i'm still looking for where where is that problem? Where, where is the thing that's bugging me? Uh, where, where is there a need for design? And in particular, when is the design gonna look really complicated? Where, where's the challenge gonna be really quite big? So it's something that's kind of complicated enough for me not to just do a quick back of the envelope design, but I kind of need to write it down to enable me to remember it. Uh, so, you know, because, you know, here in our small holding, I'm dealing with some quite large things. I break them down from projects into smaller designs you know, around the kind of hens or the veg box uh, or some kind of social aspects or personal designs. Uh, and so I find that identification of that, that challenge and that personal motivation, you know, really helps me to, to you know, do that, do that writing. Uh, to make that change basically and the other thing that's really important for me is about routine with this so over the last four or five years I've now had a kind of morning routine that's kind of evolved mm. that in itself is is a design um, but part of that morning routine is about 30 minutes 40 minutes sometimes of, of writing and I will pick a particular design for the week maybe for a Kind of two-week period and i'll really focus on that just for like 30 minutes every morning and that will involve a little bit of writing and i'll i'll typically i'll do that either on my phone possibly on my laptop but not actually normally on my phone so it's kind of quite sketchy at that level until i feel like it's it's worked out and done enough and then i'll put it onto a laptop and do that kind of final editing if i need to uh, I'm not having to submit designs for assessment these days. Um, apart from, occasionally I do, we, we do have that as part of our CBD as tutors. Uh, but I do like to finish off designs still because I like to be able to share them with apprentices as example designs that might or might not fulfill the current assessment criteria. So, so yeah, I think uh, look for the motivation and, and develop a routine. Those, those are my two things. Great, thanks Wilf. Um, and I wonder if, so I'm going to bring in Joe and Thomas. So Joe Barker, have you got any tips for, for writing up? Hi, thanks, Joe. Yeah, well, I'd love this, this uh, subject. Um, so I, I think um, being aware of the design process you're following, being conscious of that and catching and storing the survey, the analysis and making sure that you're consciously collecting photographs and at least catching and storing things. Um, I think speed write ups really good uh, 10 minute write up it's possible you write down the framework and you do each one and you, I, I like that to get me going the power of like a, a small bite uh, and then the criteria um, when I actually got around to doing writing up my project I had hundreds of projects and went through them picked out 10 all different types of things 
and the, the way I did it was to focus on the criteria and do a summary sheet and I get my apprentices to do that I find that really helpful as a tutor to access their project mm -hmm. but also for me to organize it in a way which is diploma like speak if you like so it's like an interface between the way I work and the making the diploma accessible um, so I still do that now uh, right. or trying to yeah yeah They're my best tips Cheers. Cool. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be sharing something similar um, in, at the end of this session. Um, but I'd love to see your copy of that, like how you, what you give to your apprentices. Um, and so, Thomas, you've got anything to add? Um, well, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, a lot has been said, and uh, a lot of really good stuff has been said. So not much really. Um, I mean, one thing maybe is that's kind of. Uh, Get like think about a quick win, you know, and at the beginning and um, kind of what uh, just really think about like what are the minimum like criteria and kind of so new, the new criteria guide is quite specific about that. Um, so um, you you could uh, just go for that. Look at the assessment form and kind of use that as a as a guideline, you know. And basically, if you're going through a process. Uh, cover the ethics, uh, use like maybe three tools, three principles. And with principles, I'd say go into depth rather than into breadth, if you see what I mean. Just um, basically, I like really think about one principle in great detail rather than trying to box tick all of them. Although also that, that sometimes at the beginning can be a good thing as well. And yeah, so basically just like see kind of what, how, like what the minimum effort is for the maximum effect and the effect being you've submitted a design on which you can then get feedback, you know? And so it's more important to, to me as a tutor to get something that I can interact with rather than get something perfect. Um, so yeah, just uh, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, you know? So just uh, give me something to assess and then I can help you make it better if it needs to be better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Um, don't let perfect be the enemy of the good. I think that's, that's a, that's a kind of great guiding principle for life generally, I think. Um, right. Thanks. So thanks. Am I, is there any other tutors here lurking that I have that I've forgotten? I think that's everyone, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. So, um, that brings me quite nicely on to what I was going to talk about next, which is um, sources of support. Um, let me just see what I'm going to share here. So there's various different places where you can get some support from. I'm just going to share my screen again. Um, um, so, I don't know. So there's stuff that there's obviously quite a lot of stuff that the association offers, um, and they've got this amazing new website now. Um, so there's a whole load of resources on here which you can use, um, and like Thomas has um, done a, a huge amount of work um, coordinating a lot of this, um, but there's input from loads of people on here. So key things to look at on. If, so if you just go to diploma.permaculture.org.uk um, and then you can find all this stuff. So if, I'm sure a lot of you will already be really familiar with this, so I'm probably um, telling you stuff you already know, but if you haven't been there recently, check it out. Um, in particular, there are you know, lots of designs that have been uploaded by um, other apprentices and tutors, and cheating is cheating or plagiarism um, it's pretty difficult to plagiarize somebody else's design if you're actually doing a design, but you can totally like get inspiration from how other people have written up. Um, I put all my designs on there so you can see the pattern that I use for all my designs. Um, <clears throat> yeah, basically go and have a look and get some inspiration from other people. And then another thing is use the tutors. So I've got, I've got a few um, apprentices not on this call um, who, <clears throat> They won't. They have this idea that they they won't arrange um, a tutorial with me and, until they've got something to show me. Um, and I think in a way that's kind of missing an opportunity because not having something to show me indicates that there's probably something you could do some help with to get you to the point where you've got something to show me. Um, 
And so as, as a tutor, it's quite frustrating to have um, apprentices who, um, who you kind of think, I know they're struggling, I know they're stuck, and I know they're kind of probably somewhere like where I was when I was really in this kind of negative stuck place. Um, you know, we all want to help. <laughs> so please, you know, use, use the tutors. Um, we're here for you. Um, and then on my own personal website, so joeatkinsonpermaculture.com, um, I've put some resources up here, which are the free for you to download. And essentially I've created a diploma design write-up template. This is kind of, it's an evolution from the, the um, pattern that I used in my own write-ups. And I've kind of um, developed it. So it's, um, it's essentially just, it's based on SADIM, the SADIM design framework. So it kind of goes through saying, right, survey, do these tools, like, like do a base map, do a client interview, do, um, I don't know, capture weather data. Um, next, uh, and in fact, I'll, I'll talk through, I'll, sh I'll show you through it in a minute. Um, so it's, it's basically takes you through step by step what to include in your write-up. All you need to do is fill it in. Um, and that could be your, you know, your first design could be done. Um, and then, so that's kind of this, this top half up here, the, the write-up template bit. And then there's, there are two documents below here. There's the assessment form at the bottom. That's what we tutors use to assess your designs. So that's the criteria. That's exactly how we'll be marking it and what we're looking for. And then, so that's what we use. And then based on that, I've got this, I've created like a self-assessment form. It uses all the same criteria, but it just acts as a checklist for you to say, right, um, yes, I've completed that. And here it is in on that design. And then here's how I think that my evidence meets that criteria. And that just, it means you can essentially market yourself using the same criteria. So then when you, you know that you've achieved the right level and you can hand it in confident that it's probably gonna get, it's probably gonna sail through. So, so going back to the thing I was saying before about having a pattern to write up um, your designs, there's a pattern for you that, that you can um, download it, copy it, adapt it for, for your needs so it works for you. And then all this other stuff, uh, you know, the resources to help you to clarify your goals, like what you're actually trying to achieve and to keep you on track for, for those goals. So I'll just, um, let's have a look at um, those in a bit more detail. So um, this is the, the uh, write-up template. So it's basically, it's a PowerPoint. Um, there's no kind of fancy formatting or anything. It's basically just like, right, um, give us a title slide, um, Tell us a little bit about the background of the product of the project so that we know what you're talking about. It orientates us. Tell us about the approach, which design method did you use? Also in here, I've related each of these things to which of the marking criteria this applies to. So you know that it's important because it <laughs> this is where um, what we'll be looking for as tutors. So tell us which approach you've used, because we will be looking to see that you have consciously applied um, a design framework. Then move on to your survey. So this is now we're on criterion 2A. So include things like your base map, your client interview, and so on. You may optionally want to include some additional stuff depending on how big a design or how you know the size of it. Same thing with the analysis. And again, this is now criteria 2B and so on. So it just goes through survey, analysis, design. Um, this, like Thomas was saying, really important. Make sure that you apply um, talk about how you've applied the ethics, um, because that is a, a criterion for that, and any principles. If you don't mention the ethics and principles, um, the design will be returned for rework if they're missing. Um, and that's probably the same with all these criteria, to be honest. Come on to do your design. So patterns, um, sorry, this is the, sorry, the uh, optional stuff. So that's the basic stuff. Ethics, principles, maybe do zones, bubble design more optional stuff that may or may not be relevant. Now, six of your 10 designs, so the, the majority of your designs have to be implemented. So this is kind of a little bit um, optional, but if, it is, if the design is implemented, then we want to see an implementation section. If it isn't gonna be implemented, you could just put like a single slide in, how would this be implemented? Or here's a, here's a simple plan, and it could be as simple as, um, phase one or like for this season, um, dig holes and put fruit trees in because uh, it's winter. 
spring, then plant the annual veg, um, summer watering and feeding. It could be as simple as that. Um, and the same thing with the maintenance, which again is optional um, and may not apply if you haven't actually implemented it. Um, we really want to see an evaluation of the design. Did it work or not? Is it is it any good? What what um, what failed with the design? In particular, we're really interested to see you being honest about your design, what was successful and what wasn't, and what were the lessons that you took from that. Um, and then, also super important is the reflection. Like, how has this whole process of doing this design helped you to grow as a designer? And because this is the bit where you do that real kind of um, like reflecting on on your skills and your your kind of yeah experience and abilities and that's where you're really going to kind of grow and develop as you go on um, so that's the um yeah template for you to take away use um change it however you want um there is also uh, where is it so this is the self-assessment form that i was, was talking about that I've, I've created for you this is basically based on what we fill in as the tutors all this first page so what's your name what's the project title and so on and then down here, this is a list of all the criteria that you that we're marking you against. So 1A, the design uses an appropriate design framework or intentional process accurately. So that's what I'm looking for when I'm, I'm marking one of these. So it's really helpful for me if you tell me where I'm going to find that criterion. And also, if you give me some justification, like why you think it meets that. The process of filling this in will allow you to identify any gaps in your design write-up. So you can say, oh, right, shit, I've missed um, one C. Um, or the, the reason I'm giving for how I think this design meets one C, I'm kind of bullshitting a bit, so maybe I need to go back and revisit that. Um, and basically, it's a way of you kind of defending your, your work, which essentially your write-up is um, it's you claiming how, how your design is a permaculture design and how it's to the standard of the diploma. So in here is how you can argue your case, if you like. Um, and then... Then when we're marking, we can look at that, look at your design and say, all right, yeah, can see really clearly this is where that criteria is met and this is how they think it meets it. Great. I might have a different a difference of opinion. I might see a way in which you could make that, you could develop it and make it even better. Um, but this should give you a load more clarity and like a framework to work through to give you some certainty to really um, remove all that kind of doubt about what's good enough, what am I aiming for? What's, you know, what does a design write-up even need to look like? Um, so that's, I present all this stuff to say, maybe use that for like your first design or your second design if you're kind of still a bit unsure how to write up. And then after that, you will build confidence and you will develop your own style and um, you'll find your own way of doing it that works for you. This is just really the idea is to help you if you're stuck with all that stuff of like not knowing where to start and just feeling totally overwhelmed. Um, okay, I'm sure there's something else I was going to show you, but I can't remember what it is now. So um, I'm going to come back to... Um, open it up to everyone now. So we've got an, another sort of seven minutes left. So those of you who have written up a few designs, um, so all across all the apprentices, or if you, you know, if you've done similar work, um, self-directed academic study or something, if you've got any kind of hints and tips that you want to share with the group, just go for it. So, yeah. Anyone want to chip in? I've, I've just got another uh, quickie to add, Joe. I've actually put it on the chat, but um, one thing I've found really helpful during my uh, time as an apprentice and also now is to actually physically have a physical notice board that is somewhere really observable, maybe near the kettle or in your kitchen or wherever you hang out in your house most, and just like use it like literally so that you can write something down on a scrap of paper and stick it on the board or you've maybe taken a photograph that you can print off and stick that on the board and then you're growing your design you're physically growing it for all that stuff that was just in your head that you're thinking oh, I'm, not, I'm not getting it down I'm not getting it documented I'm you know and it gets a bigger and bigger issue actually because it's all there and also you're seeing it all the time so you're reminded about that design that you're working on and it can just be like really super useful to to kind of kickstart maybe or, or add that little extra layer of motivation and inspiration to get on and, and complete it because you're doing it and you've got the evidence there that you are doing it so mm. great thanks Katie so anyone else anything they'd like to chip in 
Or, yeah, yeah Kath, so I saw a hand from Kath. Okay, um, yeah, I've got a question. I, a recent design I've done, because I'm nomadic at the moment, I'm trying to work directly on the laptop, which I don't like at all. But that particular design, I've been doing that. So all my thoughts are going straight down onto the laptop. And I'm following the design process in order. I'm using um, Sadimet for that one. And so everything is going down there. So then I'm not really sure whether <laughs> it's too much, whether like having every thought is just too much for accreditation. And I should then maybe my design, my write-up process is to go, go out and go down and um, like reduce it all, praise it all. I, I, so as tutors, I'd be interested to know what you think. Great, great question. Um, yes, I think it sounds like you've potentially got an editing job there. Um, so we've specifically, or I've specifically not talked about word counts. Um, and that's partly because I think when you get into talking about word counts, then it, you're really talking about lots of words and it being a written report, which um, a lot of mine tended to be more like annotated pictures. Um, but anyway, that's, that's um, a tangent. Um, ultimately, we have to mark it and we've only got so much time to do, we're only paid like X amount of time to be able to assess these designs. So if for each of your designs you hand in war and peace, then <laughs> essentially you're asking us to do like tons and tons of unpaid work to assess your designs. So there's a little bit of kind of having a bit of people care for your tutor as well, <laughs> or fair shares. Um, and but I think also, you know, with any kind of writing, not just writing up diploma designs, you know, think think about who's your audience. Um, and if that your audience, part of your audience is your tutor, part of your audience is potentially people that you want to market your services to, or people you want to teach in the future. So kind of think about that, about that, and then think about well, what's appropriate? What's the appropriate amount to share? But then use the criterion, sorry, the criteria checklist to make sure you're hitting all those. And that's the key thing. Really. Just make sure you're meeting all that. And then if you've got stuff that's extraneous, yeah, get rid of it because it's just extra stuff that we don't need to we don't need to see and that comes back to this the, the point i made quite early on about um feeling like oh this this write-up feels like it's not an authentic reflection of the whole process i've missed yeah, loads yeah. of stuff out it feels like i'm bullshitting you because it, it's it's not all there that's fine it doesn't all need to be there it, it is in a sense it's not a work of fiction but it's very much an edited version of the reality that you went through which is you know a lot of design projects can be quite messy and all over the place and um but yeah you don't need to show us all of it does that answer the question does it help yeah it does i guess an image of uh, if you ask a, a builder to tell you how he built a house or something you don't need to know every nail every brick yeah <laughs> like i think mine are sometimes every nail and every brick <laughs> yeah 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 thanks thanks very much sir. any any um other responses from other tutors on that question Uh, I, I could say something about word count, if that's if that's relevant. Yeah, just uh, I mean that I'm in the process of um, editing and creating an updated criteria manual. Uh, so we're not changing the criteria as such; we're just changing the information about how we communicate it. So, uh, so some of this information from your session, Joe, I think will be really relevant for that. Um, word count is one of the things that we're looking at, and how do we communicate that to people? From my personal experience as a tutor, I find if it's more than about 5,000 words and I start to see it going beyond that time allocated that I have for design work. So I try and encourage my apprentices to try and stick around a kind of three and a half, 4,000 word mark. If it starts to get beyond about 7,000 words, then either I just accept it, it's a one-off large design within the portfolio or as a possibility that it needs more editing. Uh, or possibly that it's actually two designs within that within a larger project. So, mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is, uh, I think to add is about supporting evidence, which is one of the criteria we kind of do need to see supporting evidence. We don't necessarily need to read it in detail, but if you've got something you feel is important that, that gives that authenticity, that um, that shows evidence and proof that something actually happened then you just put it into an appendix, you know, and you, so we can kind of quickly glance at it and go, oh yeah, that, that really did happen. Um, but we don't necessarily need to read that detailed journal or that, you know, list of invoices or, or every nail, as you put it, which I, I quite like. Um, 
it's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. Great, thanks, Wilf. Um, I'm conscious that it's 11.45, and um, I think with Zoom calls, it's really important to make sure that you get time to get away from the screen. So I'm going to be a bit um, strict and say, let's um, stop and have a break. I'm going to put loads of links somewhere where we can share them, I'll initially on the Jamboard, but some people can't access it. So I'll, I'll, we will make sure that you get links to all this stuff that we've covered. Um, we will, I'll try not to do a cath and um, completely overwhelm you with all, too much detail, but we try and make sure that you uh, yeah, get all the, all the resources that we refer to. Um, right, okay. Thanks for your, um, your time and for listening and go away and have a cup of tea and see you back here at, oh no, Katie, you need to put everyone in groups, don't you? Yeah, thanks Joe. Yeah, actually it's Carla that's, Carla's just about to put us all oh, at, right. into our breakout rooms.